Moin, I'm Tillmann from the Radelbande and this is Jab Kellner of VeloLab in Bremen. And uh, if you wonder why we are speaking in English, this is because Statis, the founder of VeloLab, um, I did an interview with him uh, when I visited VeloLab in Bremen and uh, we did it in English. And for the sake of continuity, I think we'll proceed in English. This is Statis, and he's one of the founders, or let me get this straight, let me first ask this question. So, how did VeloLab start? So, uh, VeloLab uh, started in 2017, when I brought uh, actually the company that I have started in Greece, in, mm -hmm. in Athens. Yeah. So, while I was looking for a bicycle friendly, uh, with a nice bicycle culture city, um, I ended up to Bremen, by, let's say, an accident, yeah. I like say, but it was a fortunate thing. So when I came to, to Bremen, after the very first uh, two months, I met Job. So Job okay. uh, came on board uh, actually right, right from the beginning. Yeah. So uh, in Athens itself, is there any bike culture or cargo bike culture? There is no culture at all. Okay. I mean, so in terms of bicycle, I mean, yeah. especially with the cargo bikes, which nobody knows about cargo bikes. There. Okay. So it's something new, completely new. Yeah. Is there any infrastructure for bikes? No. Okay, so you are, if, if you're into bikes, you're totally on your own. You have to, to uh, find a, the, your way between your cars. Mm -hmm. And actually that was uh, the, what initiated a really agile and flex, uh, easy to ride and a sportive cargo bike because you have to get all the way inside yeah. the, the traffic and to avoid the traffic and to avoid the cars. So yeah. it was a mix of a, a mountain bike, uh, agile geometry, with uh, somehow a, a utility vehicle. Yeah. But the city is not friendly for the bicycle. Okay. It's nothing so to do with it. all over Greece, I think it's, it's the same. Right? No, it's not the same. There are okay. cities that are really bike friendly, smaller cities, like okay. uh, up to 100,000 population, which is okay. really small yeah. to do a business there, to grow there. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Um, how, do you, how did you start with bicycles at all? Uh, so if you were if you're in Athens where there's no bike infrastructure, and the roof is, is coming no, down. I hope it's not for me. Um, there's no bi bike infrastructure. So, so how did, did you get into bicycles? Uh, I was in uh, racing cycling for many years. Uh -huh. Actually, I was into uh, competitive cycling more, more than 15 years. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I started engineering. Yeah. So my obsession back there as a student, as a racing cyclist, was to study a cycle, a frame, yeah. a bicycle frame. But uh, they, they didn't let me, actually, my, my instructor there, to, okay. to study this. So I had this obsession for many years. And uh, yeah. after I stopped cycling, racing cycling, and uh, transforming into a commuter and a family father, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had this idea of, uh, after my third kid, that I should build the, my own cargo bike based on my needs. Yeah. But actually, the, the, the design of the cargo bike was something that came r many years after my first bicycle. Because mm -hmm. everything started with a, with a folding bicycle back in yeah. 2010. The design uh, and the manufacturing thing, it was uh, started back in 2010, but it was nothing to do with uh, uh, creating a company or mm -hmm. do this as mm -hmm. a business. It was yeah. a side effect. I was a, a, a machine bow engineer in a, a construction companies. And uh, I was doing this uh, over the night. I mean, it was late after. Uh, yeah, know. yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's the same with with this YouTube job that I'm doing. Yeah, at probably. The moment. Yeah. Probably. Um, so you, you started with a folding bicycle. What came after that? Uh, after the folding bicycle, uh, this was a really radical uh, bike. Uh, it was um, first appeared in uh, Eurobike in 2014, mm -hmm. but in already from 2013 was an entry in the Eurobike Awards back then, the okay. IF yeah. Awards. Yeah. That is the first bike that passed the, actually the first stage. And after that, a non-folding bike appeared and an electric version appeared. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it was a really it was a really difficult design approach because the bicycle is uh, it was uh, single sided in both ways okay. and has yeah. to fold it and uh, seemed to be it was a long R&D process and after that the non the normal bikes seem to be really easy to be made yeah. and to be designed so yeah. some a few bicycles like uh, uh, normal city bikes it was a, it was a piece of cake to be made yeah. the cargo bike on the other side was it's a much more complex thing mm. to design to study 
and also to manufacture. That was a more challenging thing for me back then. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. It was in 2016 when the, the prototypes started to be, to make, you know, to, to be alive. Yeah, and it's the Caro that you are still still producing. Exactly, it was a, a few prototypes uh, with different uh, dimension was made mm -hmm. and uh, it was always the short one. So the yeah, short, okay. the short mm -hmm. version was developed in the mountains. It, so it was a completely off-road, like a gravel. Ah, okay. yeah. like that. Yeah. Athens is surrounded by mountains. Yeah. There is nothing flat. Mm -hmm. So you have to climb, uh, I had to climb 10% uphill to go okay. to, the, to the mountain that was next to my house. Yeah. So all the bicycle was developed in order to, to be efficient in the off-road and the climbing conditions. Yeah, okay, I understand, yeah. Um, you ended up with the material aluminum. Mm -hmm. Why? Why didn't you choose steel as uh, so many other cargo bike manufacturers, especially the, the more artisan ones, yeah. the more handmade ones? Aluminum has uh, some advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. So in engineering we call it mechanical properties. Yeah. And uh, the good thing with aluminum is you can make something really light, but aluminum suffers from fatigue, yes. suffers from uh, coposis. Mm. But this is not about only the material. So when you design something, you keep in mind all these mechanical properties, and you can design things based on these properties. Yeah. So with a space, with a space design, <laughs> with a space frame design, you can eliminate all the fatigue problems, but yeah. also have a lighter frame lighter and more agile, more rigid. Yeah, It I has to do with the design approach. I should have uh, used all the length of the bicycle. Mm -hmm. So in order to use all the length, so you can put long items from the top up to the back, yeah. you shouldn't have this steep steering tube that mm -hmm. most of the producers, probably all of them, have. Yeah. Yeah. But this creates another problem. You cannot have this steering tube, this steering uh, bar, in order to, to control the front wheel. Mm -hmm. And uh, by creating a solution of a space, you create another problem. This is why uh, the steering system has been completely redesigned and uh, yeah. at this point was also patented as a new, the, with, the, with the cables. Yeah. But the shape uh, was already uh, predefined in my mind, that mm -hmm. has to be space frame. Yeah. As, uh, it's really common in engineering, bridges yes, are yeah. made like this, yeah. or houses, it's really light and really strong. So what are you, what is the, the 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 possibilities that you have with the bike at the moment um, in terms of uh, shifting um, engine? So uh, we're trying to have a standard model as as possible because the production it's nothing to do with it's really difficult to control um, and have some e efficient production if you have many different models. Mm -hmm. In uh, practically you can have any any setup you like. But uh, we have focused in a setup of a si one single, to, uh, single disc to 10 or 11 mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. in order to simplify the assembling and the manufacturing process. Because yeah. it's really difficult. We are really small and we cannot handle many customizations. Uh, now it seems that uh, it's really, really um, um, famous and getting more people and more uh, fans. It's uh, the, the GRX. It's yeah. uh, the, the gravel setup, the gravel as, setup, as they yeah. called. But it's not about um, the name of it, because uh, the gearing is uh, more close to what we need to have in a bicycle, mm -hmm. in a cargo bicycle. Mm -hmm. In a city bicycle, that also can spend more time outside the city, and uh, as probably in, in some mountains. Yeah. Um, will the cargo bike be the last product Velo Lab makes, or <laughs> how do you, what do you plan for the future? We have several projects that are getting in, into the pipeline. So now that you can see, even now, it's uh, stainless steel uh, gravel bikes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have chosen uh, to use stainless steel because of the sustainability of the, yeah. of the material. Uh, we don't have to paint, so mm -hmm. we don't have chemicals, we don't have uh, extra baking in the oven. And the bicycle, it uses simple, um, normal industrial material, not so thin, not so yeah. light. Yeah. But the bicycle lasts forever. You're producing the frames and the complete production is here in Bremen, right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, why, why Bremen? Why Bremen? This is, a, like I said before, it was more like a, an accident. I was looking for a place uh, in North Europe, bike friendly. Mm -hmm. uh, within uh, this approach, it was uh, also thinking about uh, Netherlands and also Denmark. But uh, Bremen, we ha have a, had a friend here, actually, that okay. actually mm. got me through this city. Yeah. 
and uh, warned me from the beginning because it's so bike friendly, it's so family friendly, and uh, it's a beautiful city by the river. It that is, yeah. You can easily, you know, some, find something magical here. Yeah. Uh, it is. Uh, it has about 20, 25, or 30 percent, 30 percent commuting, which is really high for the uh, mm -hmm. for the uh, for Europe. I mean, by average, must be one of the top cities of cycling. In, in yeah, Europe. it could be. Yeah. And uh, it has this history of industrial, so you can industrial generally and shipping. Yeah. So even the place here, it's an old Kellogg's factory. Yeah, it is. Somehow <laughs> yeah. left it here, and it's perfect for us. Yeah, yeah. I believe so. Yeah. Any plans to go to Asia? No, not, not not even a dream, not even a, just a small thought. All right. I, I would I would might say I would might say that I don't like doing things outside Europe yeah. generally. There are some plans to might do stuff also back in Greece, but mm -hmm. it seems like a faraway plan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Mm. Thanks, Datis. And You're um, welcome. yeah, I will talk to Yap as well. Sure. And um, let's see how I combine these two interviews together. You will find a way, I'm sure. I, I will find a way. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Jap, it's a pleasure to be here and to meet you uh, again. And um, we want to talk a little bit about uh, Velo Lab, the future, the past, and why you do what you do and how you do it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with a question. How did you get to Velo Lab? Actually, I have a twin brother and uh, his wife is from Athens, Greece. Mm -hmm. So she actually made the contact because she went to school with a uh, wife of Stathis uh, in Athens. Mm -hmm. And at some point, Maria, that's her name, um, she, uh, she called me up and said, hey, Jeb, I know you're looking for a new adventure or something uh, to develop uh, something new because I was employed and not so happy in the last company. Mm -hmm. So I was looking for new options and Maria knew this. So she called me up and said, Strangest thing I just realized, an old school friend of mine is living in Bremen of all places. Yeah. Haven't seen her for 20 years. We hooked up and what stuff is her husband is doing, you should check out. Okay. So I went over there. I was the first uh, workshop that stuff is rented. He moved to Germany uh, in July 2017. Mm -hmm. So this was now September. Yeah. And I met him on a Wednesday, I remember. And we talked for a couple of hours. He showed me what they were doing in fifth, on 50 square meters, okay. um, uh, cutting, welding, everything uh, in, in this tiny workshop. And after two hours, I said, okay, would, would I be of any help to you if I would join you? And he mm -hmm. said, yeah, sure. I don't even speak German. I, I have a hard time getting around. And I said, all right. So I quit my job the day after. Okay. Right right next day. And that's how we started, basically. Yeah. And I, I joined. And even though I'm a bicycle enthusiast like him, I have never raced bicycles like stuff this has done for 15 mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. really, professionally in Greece. Um, but I always loved bicycles, so there was a connection. Okay, so um, you have worked in the bike industry before? No. Okay, so what did you do? Uh, I try to keep it short because it, it's yeah. a path with some, some turns. Um, so I did an apprenticeship um, as a tailor. So I'm a tailor by trade right mm -hmm. after, well, after school was army, then the 10 month, um, then two years of apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. Then I studied to become an engineer of clothes manufacturing. Mm -hmm. um, both in Hamburg, this apprenticeship was north of Hamburg and um, the studies in Hamburg. Then complete shift, we moved to France with my family, mm -hmm. helped build up a yoga center, ashram thing for seven okay. and a half years in the French Alps. And uh, then I came back, we started from scratch again in Germany. Uh, so at the end, or the last years before I joined VeloLab, I was in procurement. I did mm -hmm. uh, the organic certifications, the biocide certifications for a company that was active in the organic market. Okay. And um, then I moved over to to sell yeah. bikes. And uh, so, but with this expertise, stuff is as a mechanical engineer and di designer, me mm -hmm. as an engineer for basically fabrics and um, and with a 
tailor um, apprenticeship. I can do all the uh, textile accessory development yeah. and production. Um, stuff is all the metal works and both of us have a passion for wood. So okay. right yeah. from the start, we could, uh, we cut the boards and the boxes, everything by hand with a hand router. Uh, I developed some bags and a canopy and, and all of this stuff while stuff is, was working on the frames. Yeah. Basically. So how have, how has this uh, year 2020 been for you? Uh, challenging. Yes, it's um, it's been very exciting the last 12, 15 months, basically, because the demand is on the rise still. Mm. We're, we have a very high demand for bicycles, for cargo bikes. And at the same time, the procurement, the supply chain is difficult, to say the yeah, least. Yeah. It's really difficult to um, to plan anything. To rely on on partners in, in terms of supply, uh, and basically any component, if it's tires or the wood for the um, for the boards, or the brakes and gears and everything, there's no part that it doesn't have its shortages. Mm. Basically, yeah. uh, so far the most reliable has been the aluminum. We okay. source it from Greece. There, there are strong connections there anyways, but yeah. somehow Greek aluminum uh, hasn't, hasn't been sourced so much on the world market okay. because it's yeah. a bit special. Mm. Um, uh, so it's, it's not a grade that is mostly used in the industry. Okay. Uh, we use a kind that has um, uh, the regains its strength through aging, uh, so we don't need to temper it, don't mm. need to bake it after welding yeah, basically yeah. and that's a specialty that we value highly therefore it's probably a bit more expensive than mm. the other stuff that you need to uh, heat treat after welding yeah. so I guess that's a reason why we don't have any problem okay. getting aluminum but yeah. we have a big stock anyways so. okay <laughs> <laughs> so from your perspective what is special about the VeloLab bikes mainly um, well the the innovation and the speed of innovation is is quite special. We have some, um, especially for the cargo bikes, some unique uh, selling points like the steering system, the geometry of the steering, um, the lightweight and uh, stiffness aspect of the frames. Of course, the fact that we built them completely in Germany, that mm -hmm. we uh, do the welding and also the powder coating now in-house. Uh, the complete development really from the first idea of the bike all the way to the finished um, serial models uh, that we do everything in house is quite unique. Yes. Yeah. What drives you as a as a bicycle or cargo bike manufacturer? Uh, what's your what's your goal um, with those bikes? Actually, we we build bikes and bikes in a way we do because this is how we personally uh, like to ride them. Mm -hmm. This is why we have the gear set up of them, why we have these brakes, why it's this geometry. Uh, it's a bit coming from our perspective. This is why we build a gravel bike. Mm -hmm. um, Stathis and I both wanted to have a gravel bike. Yeah. So uh, it was quite reasonable to say, okay, let's, let's build some, some gravel yeah. bikes. Um, Every single bike we've developed so far had a personal need somehow. Mm -hmm. Like the gravel bike was uh, created because Stathis expected his third child. And okay. uh, so there was a need for a cargo bike yeah. currently and there weren't any cargo bikes in Greece to be mm -hmm. bought. And uh, especially not that the price that he was looking for and not as sportive, not as um, agile as uh, he wanted it. So he sat down and, and developed one. Um, so this is the perspective we have that um, we love the bikes we create and like to share basically. Yeah. So this, the main focus or motivation is not to build, I don't know, like 10,000 bikes in a year. Um, it's more doing what we love, sharing. This is growing naturally anyways. Yeah. Um, we've 
last year at this point, we were just the two of us mm -hmm. plus one mini jobber. Yeah. And um, then in August, we hired two people full time. And now we are altogether 12 people. Um, so this within this period, and it kind of comes back to your initial question, how has 2020 been? Um, also really dynamic because yeah. we decided to do the jump to say, okay, we're not going to stay small and just produce 50 bikes a year. Mm -hmm. This we can do with just the two of us and that's enough to live from. And if there is a higher demand, people just have to wait like, like a traditional frame mm -hmm. builder would or yeah. could do. Um, but we decided now we, we would like to have a team. We would yeah. like to uh, answer the demand basically and supply what is needed yeah. and it's it's been a lot of fun a lot of challenges yeah that's to, so. yeah. yeah with the so so the new bikes for 2021 are this gravel cargo bike and you also present your own non non cargo <laughs> gravel yes. bike so uh, what's in stake for the future of uh, velo lab uh, we have some Some ideas in the drawer, some some new de developments. There's, for example, one interesting project of a funeral bike, okay. a funeral cargo bike that um, an artist from Oldenburg approaches. He built a kind of like an art installation, mm -hmm. a bike to transport coffins yeah. to the cemetery. Um, and this had a lot of media coverage. Mm -hmm. Um, so he was looking for a producer and through a webinar, he got to know me. Okay. So we hooked up and right now we're sourcing the financing to get yeah. this off to a start because of course you cannot put a coffin in there. Um, <coughs> it's a three wheel construction yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, really heavy, something around four meters long. Mm -hmm. So it's huge. Yeah. And, um, so it will take a lot of development and it's something that, uh, we couldn't finance just on the side of our mm -hmm. production. So we're looking for partners there. That's a, a project. And with a new setup we have, the new production place, we do, would like to offer some workshops um, around cycling, around yeah. frame building, around cargo bikes, but also normal bikes. Mm -hmm. um, we'd like to develop more um, with a with a gravel bike that's a stainless steel frame. Mm -hmm. uh, experiment a little bit more around this. Um, and more generally speaking, what uh, does the cargo bike itself mean to you? And what would be the, your projection for the future of the cargo bike in Germany? Mm, I value it highly that there are so many different companies and that yeah. we are on really friendly terms with basically all the cargo bike producers. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's like a big family and it's for everybody, it's clear. Um, it's a huge market mm. and there's space for everybody. So yeah. it's really supportive. And for us, um, the cargo bike, we use it as a day-to-day -day vehicle. So I commute to work with it. Um, I cover around 80 kilometers a day with it. Mm. Um, and it's really versatile. Yeah. I can put my dog in front, I can put my groceries in, st uh, in front or just my backpack or, or anything. Um, so it's my main vehicle. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's like a sports bike. Um, and this is for us. Um, the vision for our cargo bikes is to keep it agile and fast and, and like uh, more, more the sportive aspect mm -hmm. because... This suits us, and there are plenty of companies and, and startups that uh, have a more family, a huge transport area uh, approach, and that's super cool because whenever somebody comes up to me and says, how can I fit four kids in this? I say, yeah, you can't, you can. <laughs> but I can name you at least half a dozen yeah. companies that you can try out yeah. that I think do a very good job. Mm -hmm. Of course, they're more heavy and they're bigger, And they're not as agile because you cannot have everything, yeah. you know? So you need to choose. Or at the end of the day, it makes sense to have two or three cargo bikes in your car. Yeah, it, get rid it of your cars, it definitely get does. some yeah. more cargo bikes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and this is actually a trend that I see, that we have already 
I mean, it's been four years now um, that that we've created, built up VeloLab in Germany. So it's not a huge long time, but we have already some clients that uh, bought their second cargo bike from us. Yeah. Because uh, like my brother in, in Leipzig said after one year, I need to get another one. Yeah. Because every morning uh, there's a discussion who gets to ride the cargo bike. <laughs> so I'm just going to get a second one. Yeah. Second yeah. one w was without a motor, first one with a motor, so it's okay. they're super happy now. Yeah. And since they have five kids, it makes sense to have okay. Yeah, bikes, yeah it sure. does. Yeah. Okay, so uh, last question. Do you consider producing your frames somewhere else, in Asia or something? No. no. For numerous reasons, basically. One thing is we develop too fast for that. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be comfortable with ordering a minimum order of, I don't know, 200 to 500 frames yeah. and be stuck with one version without being able to alter it. Mm -hmm. um, so it would be uh, like putting brakes on the innovation for yeah. us. And then there's the quality control and the shipment and the delays and, and all of this. Um, and we have really good guys. Uh, now, when you look at the weldings, what Torben is doing, yeah. uh, it's, it's really nice to find this kind of quality. And especially now with what we have seen the last months and yeah. I don't know, like about the year and the outlook, the next 12 to 18 months, actually, I have to say, and it looks like it might be even longer. Yeah. I'm really happy that we are as independent as we are. Mm -hmm. And our vision is more to produce even more in-house, yeah. to see that, uh, like the forks, we sourced in the past the forks um, from outside. Then last year, March, February, March, we couldn't get forks anymore. So we decided, okay, let's build them ourselves, but yeah. then in a way that we really would like it. So yeah. it's a through axle, 15 millimeters. It's stainless steel. It has a design that fits with the rest of the frame. And yeah. we're really happy about this. Um, would be a dream to build our own brakes and <laughs> gears and yeah. cranks and everything. Um, we have built some bottom brackets already, press fit, uh, to try out. Um, uh, even, even spacers now, we, we have a hard time getting spacers, so we, we make them ourselves. Yeah. We have the you know, powder coating now. Really raining, huh? <laughs> and yeah. um, there it all depends at the end uh, on the machines you can afford. Yeah, we have the people to run the machines, uh, but if you need a few hundred thousand euros for a machine, it needs to pay off somehow. You yeah. need to have the money in the first place, and then it needs to pay off. So, that's always a numbers game yeah. how many bikes can we produce or can we sell yeah. in order to, to get the money back. But that would be our dream, yeah. to have kind of like uh, Nikolai, uh, <laughs> yeah. a machine park like this would be yeah. our dream. Yeah. But well, I guess you're working on this. Um, Definitely, we have a long see, way to go. Let's see what the future <laughs> brings. So thanks for the interview. Thanks for coming yeah. over. Yeah, you can uh, look at VeloLab's webpage for all the information on their bikes. Um, you can watch my video that I produced in this facilities in this studio uh, that was a great experience as well to work with uh, also some some professional photographers um, and to to see how they work yeah, if you have any question about those bikes about VeloLab or about uh, Jap or Statis then type it in the comments down below give us a thumbs up if you like the video and if you want to see the complete world of the cargo bike then subscribe to the channel Jab, thank you. Thank you, Tillman. Thank you for your work. Thank you for the support of the Cargo Bike family and community. <laughs> You're welcome. And keep up the great work. Thanks. You do. You do too. <laughs> <laughs> My English. Bye-bye.